Okay, who to choose? Who to choose? So I've wanted to make a tier list video for a long time, and ranking all the playable countries in War Thunder tier list wasn't a video I'd seen yet. Let me give you my two cents on which countries deserve S tier and which to skip playing. To determine which country should go where, I made three different points in which I will rate the countries. Point number one, how much time it will take a player to get to top tier. Point number two, zero to 10 points will be given from battle rating heat maps for air and ground realistic battles. And I'm talking about these guys. Point number three, how many legendary native vehicles each country got. So I'll start from the US and work my way down the road. USA. First country you'll see in the list of nations in War Thunder. I counted a total of 372 playable vehicles, ranging from tanks to aircraft to ships that the US Tech Tree currently has to offer. So I calculated how many research points and vehicles needed to be purchased to get from the P-26P shooter to the F-16 Fighting Falcon. A player needs to research and purchase 60 aircraft in the tech tree to get to the F-16 and that will cost a whopping 6,564,700 research points. Now I won't go into details with the ground tech tree, but I can imagine the numbers there are very high as well. If the average player has 3-4 to four hours to play per day and won't spend any money on the game, it would most likely take at least a month to get to top tier in the US air tech tree. Remember, this will be greatly expedited if the player has purchased a premium vehicle and owns a premium account. Now let's get on to the next point. Here we'll look at the battle rating heat maps for the US air and ground tech tree with the main factor being win rate. The heat map on the left side is the US in air realistic battles and the heat map on the right side is the US in ground realistic battles. You can also see the battle rating ranges and win rate in percentages. In the air heat map, you can see two major green spots, the greener the better, and they're placed between battle rating 4.7 and 7.3, as well as between 8.7 and 11.3. This means you're more likely to win and enjoy air realistic battles in these battle ranges. And this is all right, it, it's nothing fancy really. Six out of 10 points to the air realistic battles heat map. Now, if we look at the ground RB heat map, we can only really see one major green spot followed by a lot of yellow and orange. This is not good, and will result in 4 out of 10 points being given to the ground RB heat map. This is 10 out of 20 points total, and we'll save that later for the conclusion. Let's move on to the last point of rating the US tech tree. Here we'll look at the amount of legendary native vehicles that the US tech tree currently has to offer. I counted 21 plus vehicles, including the M4 Sherman, P51, P38, B17 and so on. Looking at the legendary native vehicles is important since a lot of the new players choose a nation to play solely because they want to try out a legendary vehicle. The more legendary vehicles, the more interesting a nation becomes to pick. Here's the conclusion for the US tech tree. It will take at least a month to get to top tier. 10 out of 20 points were given from BR heatmaps. And it's mediocre heatmaps, they're alright. And 3. The tech tree has 21 plus legendary vehicles which is very good. I will therefore place the US tech tree at B tier. Now let's move on to Germany, one of the most popular nations in War Thunder. We now know the drill, let's see how long it takes to get to top tier. Alright, so I calculated that you need to research and buy 40 vehicles to get from the HE-51 to the MiG-29. And this will cost you 4,839,800 research points. And this is about 1.7 million RP or less compared to the US tech tree. Again, given that the average player has 3-4 to four hours of gaming per day, I'd reckon it will take at least 3 weeks to get to top tier in Germany air. Let's look at the BR heatmaps. For the air heatmap we can see two small green spots, and this is not looking good. For ground we can only see one proper green spot, and is only in one BR range. I will give the total of 5 out of 20 points, which is not a lot. Let's now look at how many legendary vehicles the German tech tree has to offer. I counted a total of 26 plus vehicles, including the BF-109, the Tiger H1, ME-262, AG-111 and so on. This is more than the US tech tree has to offer, which is really nice for Germany. So here's the conclusion for the German tech tree. It will take at least 3 weeks to get to top tier, which isn't bad. 5 out of 20 points were given from BR heatmaps. Those were some pretty bad heatmaps. And 3. Germany has 
26 legendary vehicles, which is the best so far. And therefore I'll place the German tech tree at B tier, together with the American tech tree. The next nation is the Soviet Union, one of the biggest tech trees in the game. So I calculated that you need to research and buy 43 vehicles to get from the I-15 to the MiG-29. This will cost you 5,573,700 research points and will likely take at least 3.5 weeks to get to top tier in the USSR. Alright, let's move on to the heat maps. So, for the USSR air heat map, we can only see one green spot. And it's the same thing for the ground heat map as well. It's, it's pretty bad. I rate the heat map 6 out of 20 points, since you're basically gonna suffer in ground until you reach top tier. Let's move on to the last point. How many legendary native vehicles the Soviet Union in War Thunder has? I counted 38 plus legendary vehicles, including the T-34, IL-2, BMP-1 and so on. This is a lot of vehicles that a person would love to get. This is good for the USSR. Now, the conclusion for the Soviet tech tree. It will take at least three and a half weeks to get to top tier. And six out of 20 points were given from BR heat maps, which they're, they're pretty bad again. And number three, the Soviet Union has 38 plus legendary vehicles, which is actually very, very good. I will therefore place the Soviet Union at A tier, which is the best so far. And this is because of the amount of legendary vehicles that the USSR has and that it takes a shorter time to get to top tier than the US. The only thing keeping the USSR from going to S tier are the very, very bad heat maps. Next up, we got Great Britain. I calculated that you need to research and purchase 50 vehicles to get from the Nimrod to the Tornado F3. This will cost 5,944,600 research points. This is also the second to worst country we've had in this category yet. Actually, it's just behind the US with its 6.5 million research points needed. I reckon it will take between 3.5 weeks to a month to get to top tier in Great Britain. Let's look at the battle rating heat maps. There's actually a lot of green on the air heat map, which is looking really good, but it's quite the opposite on the ground heat map, which I can't say is looking any good. I'm gonna rate the heat maps 10 out of 20 points. Now let's take a look at the amount of legendary native vehicles that Great Britain has. I counted 26 plus vehicles, including the English Electric Lightning, the Spitfire, Hurricane, and many more. Let's look at the conclusion for the British tech tree. It will take at least between three and a half weeks to a month to get to top tier. And I gave the heat maps 10 out of 20 points, which are, they're okay heat maps. And number three, the country has 26 legendary vehicles, which is okay, it's good. Which is also why I am placing Great Britain at B tier, together with the US and Germany. Let's take a look at Japan, and as per usual, I did a bit of calculating. A person needs to research and buy 34 vehicles to get from the Key 10 to the F-16, which will cost 2,765,900 research points. It's a lower number indeed, but we're also beginning to move into the smaller tech trees in War Thunder. Still nice though. I reckon it will take at least two weeks to get to top tier in Japan. Let's take a look at the battle rating heat maps. For the air heat map, we can see three major green spots, and for the ground heat map, we can see a huge red spot, which basically tells us that low tier ground RB in Japan is a huge pain in the ass to play. But once you get past battle rating 4.0, everything changes and the rest of the heat map becomes very green, which is very nice for Japan. I rate the heat maps 14 out of 20 points. Now let's look at the legendary native vehicles. I counted 14 plus vehicles, including the A6M, B6M, Type 10 and so on. It's an okay number, but again, it's one of the smaller tech trees. Let's move on to the conclusion for the Japanese tech tree. It will take at least two weeks to get to top tier, which is very good. And 14 out of 20 points were given from battle rating heat maps, and they're very good heat maps. And three, the tech tree has 14 plus legendary vehicles, which is good for a small tech tree. Therefore, I'll place Japan in A tier next to the Soviet Union. On to China, the next country on the list. I calculated that a person needs to research and buy 48 vehicles to get from the I-15 to the F-16. This will cost 5,148,800 research points, which is almost double the amount of what the Japanese players will have to grind. I reckon it will take at least three weeks to get to top tier in China. If we look at the heat maps, we can see that there are two major green spots and one small green spot for air, 
while there's two even bigger green spots for ground. We can also see a painful lot of red spots for both heat maps, which is definitely not pleasant to look at. I will rate the heat maps 12 out of 20 points. Now, China isn't known for having a lot of native vehicles, but let's look at them either way. I only counted 9 plus vehicles, including the CTC-99, J8 and Q5. Here's a conclusion for the Chinese tech tree. It will take at least 3 weeks to get to top tier. And 12 out of 20 points were given from BR heat maps. They're good heat maps. And 3. The Chinese tech tree only has 9 plus legendary native vehicles, which is bad since China's tech tree is bigger than Japan's. This is why I will place China at D tier. It simply takes too long to get to top tier and basically the whole tech tree is copy paste. Next up, we have Italy. You need to research and buy 41 vehicles to get from the CR32 to the F16. It will cost 3,383,700 research points. This is some good news for Italy. I reckon it will take 2 to 3 weeks to get to top tier in Italy air. Let's look at the heat maps. On the air heat map, we can see 4 green spots, which is the highest amount we've seen so far. If we look at the ground heat map, there's 3 green spots, but also a big red spot, meaning that people who start off in Italy ground realistic battles will have a hard time winning matches. I rate these heat maps 10 out of 20 points. I counted 12 plus legendary native vehicles, including the R3 T20, Tornado IDS, C202 and so on. This is actually not that many, since a lot of Italy's vehicles are copy paste ones, like in China. Here's a conclusion for the Italian tech tree. It will take at least 2 to 3 weeks to get to top tier in Italy air. 10 out of 20 points were given from battle rating heat maps. There are okay heat maps. And 3. Italy only has 12 plus legendary native vehicles, which isn't good. It's kind of like the China situation. This is why I will place Italy at C tier. Alright, let's take a look at France. So I calculated that you need to research and purchase 47 vehicles to get from the D371 to the Mirage 2005F. This will cost you 5,122,800 research points, which is actually on par with China. I think it will take at least 3 weeks to get to top tier in France. Let's look at the heat maps. On the air heat map we can see 3 green spots, but also some bad red spots. And it's the same for ground really. From the red spots we can see, a player is most likely going to suffer in both air and ground realistic battles if they play low tier France. I rate the heat maps 11 out of 20 points. Let's look at France's legendary native vehicles. I counted 7 plus legendary native vehicles, which is definitely not a lot. This doesn't mean that France doesn't have a lot of native vehicles though. Most of them are just unknown to the average human. Some of the vehicles I counted was the Mirage 3, Mirage 2000 and Charles Hu C. And here's the conclusion for the French tech tree. It will take at least 3 weeks to get to top tier. 11 out of 20 points were given from battle rating heat maps. They were okay heat maps, nothing special. And 3, France only has 7 plus legendary native vehicles, which is the worst so far. It's, it's really not looking good for France here. This is kind of like the China situation, though it's a bit worse. So therefore I will place France at F tier. Next up, we have Sweden. I calculated that you need to research and buy 37 vehicles to get from the J8A to the JA37D. This will cost 4,349,900 research points. This is actually a lot more than expected. I'm sorry Sweden mains. I reckon it will take at least 2.5 weeks to get to top tier in Sweden air. Let's see what the heat maps have to offer. When looking at the air heat map, we can see a lot of green and no red. This is really good. But on the ground heat map, it's a bit more mixed. It's a very average heat map with a bit of green and orange slash red. I will rate the heat maps 14 out of 20 points. I counted 6 plus legendary native vehicles for Sweden, and it's the lowest we've had so far. This includes the JA37, J35, STRV103, and so on. Here's a conclusion for the Swedish tech tree. It will take at least 2.5 weeks to get to top tier and 14 out of 20 points were given from battle rating heat maps. They were good heat maps. And 3 Sweden only has 6 plus legendary native vehicles, which is not good. This is why I will play Sweden at B tier, but in front of the US. Let's move on to the last country on the list, Israel. 
As per usual, I took out my calculator and found out a person needs to research and buy 20 vehicles to get from the Sakin to the Nets. This is a very, very low amount of vehicles, but this will surprise you. It will cost 3,992,000 research points. This is an average of almost 200,000 RP per vehicle. And remember, there's only 20 of them. I reckon we'll take at least between two and two and a half weeks to get to top tier in Israel. Onto the heat maps. On the air heat map, we can see a lot of mixing colors. We have some very green spots, but also some very bad red spots. On the ground heat map, it's a bit more relaxed, but we only really start to see green in late mid tier to top tier. I will rate these heat maps 10 out of 20 points. I looked at how many legendary native vehicles Israel has, and it's not many. They have 5 plus legendary native vehicles, including the Merkava 1 through 4 and the Kefir aircraft. So here's a conclusion for the Israeli tech tree. It will take at least 2 to 2.5 two weeks to get to top tier. And 10 out of 20 points were given from battle rating heat maps. They were okay heat maps, very interesting. And 3, Israel only has 5 plus legendary native vehicles, which is bad. And because of all of this, I will place Israel at just skip. There isn't really a reason to play Israel unless it's your dream to drive around in a Merkava. Don't get me wrong, you can still have a lot of fun while playing Israel, but if you ask me, I tell you to skip it. Now you might wonder why I didn't put any country at S tier. That's because I don't think there's any country in the game that stands out enough to be put in S tier. There's not an OP country, if that's even a thing. Also, this is obviously my first ever long, long video, and I'd like to get better at making these. So please tell me in the comments what I should do next so I can make more long format videos. If you enjoyed this video, please consider leaving a sub. What should I make next?